My fellow Americans, I seek to look beyond the doors of the White House into the hopes and fears of men and women in their homes. Our capacity is limited only by our ability to work together. I am determined to do my share. Now, it is your turn. This is a new tradition we've established with the president, a fireside hangout. This is actually the fourth year in a row that we've had the chance to sit down with the president after a State of the Union speech to hear your, his answers to your questions both on YouTube and here on Google+. We also have Lamore Free. Lamore is an entrepreneur and CEO of Adafruit, an electronics manufacturing education company in New York City. Hi, Mr. President. How are you? On the topic of legislation, um, I'm an entrepreneur, and uh, high-tech startups are an important engine of the American economy. When I go around and talk to other entrepreneurs, what I hear is they're worried that if they become successful, they're going to be targeted by software patent trolls. These are firms that collect software patents just for the purpose of litigation and you know, getting money out of small companies that can't afford uh, patent defense. They're expensive. So I know you've made a lot of progress on patent reform, but I'm wondering, what are you planning to do to limit the abuses of software patents? For example, would you be supportive of limiting software patents to only five years long? Well, I, I think it's a great question, and you're right. Uh, a couple of years ago, we began a process of patent reform. Uh, we actually passed some legislation that made progress on some of these issues, but it hasn't captured all the problems. And uh, the folks that you're talking about are a classic example. Uh, they don't actually produce anything themselves. They're just trying to essentially leverage uh, and, and hijack somebody else's idea and see if they can uh, extort some money out of them. And you know, sometimes these things are challenging because we also want to make sure that the patents are long enough that you know, people's intellectual property is protected. We've got to balance that with making sure that they're not so long that uh, innovation uh, is reduced. And, but I do think that our efforts at patent reform only went about halfway to where we need to go. And what we need to do is pull together, um, you know, additional stakeholders and see if we can build some additional consensus on some smarter patent laws. This, this is true, by the way, across the board when it comes to uh, high-tech issues. The technology is changing so fast. We want to protect privacy. We want to protect people's civil liberties. We want to make sure the Internet stays open. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm an ardent believer that uh, what's powerful about the Internet is, is its openness and, and the capacity for people to uh, get out there and just introduce a new idea with low barriers uh, to entry. Uh, we also want to make sure that uh, you know, people's intellectual property is protected. And whether it's you know, how we're dealing with copyright, how we're dealing with patents, uh, how we're dealing with pr uh, piracy issues, uh, what we've tried to do is to be an honest broker between the various uh, stakeholders and to continue to refine it, uh, hopefully keeping up with the technology, which doesn't mean that there aren't occasionally going to be some uh, some problems that we still haven't identified and we uh, have to keep on working on. Mr. President, let's switch gears for a moment. We wanted to have everyone get the chance to ask you a more personal question during the Hangout. And let's start with Lamore and Lee. Hi, thanks. Um, Mr. President, have your daughters expressed any interest in pursuing a career in science or engineering? You know, uh, they're doing really well in science and math so far. Uh, and that's encouraging, uh, <laughs> that, that they actually like it uh, and they have fun doing it. Um, Malia just turned 14, Sasha's 11. Uh, I, I don't think they're yet at the age where they've kind of determined uh, what their career path is going to be. And what Michelle and I try to encourage is just saying you know, math and science is part of your overall educational experience. We don't want you intimidated by it. We want you to continue to pursue it so that your options remain open uh, as you get older. Uh, but one of the things that I really strongly believe in uh, is that we need to have more uh, girls interested in math, science, and engineering. Uh, we've got half the population that uh, is way underrepresented in those fields, and that means we've got a whole bunch of talent uh, that downstream uh, is not being encouraged the way they need to. And, and so uh, the White House Office of Women and Girls has been partnering with the Department of Education so that our STEM education agenda trying to get more math and science and, and technology education in the schools 
also focuses on making sure underrepresented groups like, uh, uh, like girls uh, are encouraged in these fields. Mr. President, I want to shift now to the topic of education, something you spent a lot of your student union speech talking about. And let's go back to Lamore in New York City. Thanks. Um, on Tuesday, you challenged American high schools to better equip graduates for the demands of a high-tech economy. Yeah. When I attended high school, I had to take a foreign language requirement. So my question is, can we make it a national effort to also add a computer programming language requirement? I think it makes sense. I really do. And you know, part of what I'm trying to do here is to uh, make sure that we're working with uh, high schools and school districts all across the country to, to make the high school experience relevant for young people, not all of whom are going to get a four-year college degree or an advanced degree. Uh, and, you know, I think that the concept of vocational education uh, got a bad rap at a certain point because the perception was, well, you know, we're tracking folks into, uh, you know, blue-collar jobs and then the, you know, we're reserving white-collar jobs for a certain group. All those categories, I think, have, have uh, uh, eroded. So, you know, you look at somebody like Mark Zuckerberg, I, I was sitting next to him uh, at dinner uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and he basically said, you know, he taught himself programming, primarily because he was interested in games. And there are a whole bunch of young people out there, I suspect, who, if in high school, are given the opportunity to figure out, here's how you can design your own games but it requires you to know math, it requires you to know science, or uh, you know, here's what a career in graphic design looks like, and we're gonna start setting those uh, uh, you know, programs in our high schools, not waiting till a community college, and then you can apprentice with somebody who's already uh, a graphic designer in your area. What it does, not only is, is to prepare young people who may choose not to go to a four-year college to be job ready, uh, but it also engages kids because they feel like, I get this. This is not just me sitting there slouching uh, in the back of the room while somebody is lecturing. And, and I think uh, given how pervasive uh, computers and uh, the Internet is now and, and how integral it is into our economy and how fascinated kids are with it, I want to make sure that they know act uh, how to actually uh, produce stuff uh, using computers and not simply consume stuff. I had a great time, guys. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye.